Good morning from Kwantan, the capital city of Pahang, Malaysia. Friend and I just travelled from Penang, the state of Penang, which is on the northwestern side, all the way to the eastern side of Peninsula, Malaysia. And we have passed through the different beautiful states of Kelantan and Trengganu, and now ending in Pahang. But today's video is not about our travels. This video is about saying bye-bye to all your travels when you retire. And why do I say that? Assuming you're somebody who doesn't really plan for retirement, and by the time you retire, you are going with the basic retirement amount for your particular country. Let's say in Singapore, you're drawing about two to three thousand Sing dollars in terms of CPF payout. In Malaysia, maybe after all your total amount, you have a drawdown of around three to four thousand ringgit, and that's all you have. How can you travel? Hi, I'm John, one half of the Corporate Breakout Couple. My wife friend and I travel frequently ever since we retired in 2020. And we'd like to share with you that it's not so simple for you to travel regularly after you retire, especially if you rely on traditional means or retirement planning. If you're merely relying on a basic retirement payout or drawing down for a basic retirement sum, we can assure you that that will barely be enough to cover your basic needs, let alone your wants like traveling. Before we continue, we appreciate it if you hit the like button and subscribe to join our YouTube family. Firstly, let's cover on who actually likes to travel. Is it your grandpa, a grandma, or actually the Gen Zs, the millennials, and the Gen Xs? When my grandmother was alive, she didn't like to travel at all. She likes to stay at home in within the comforts of her own home and the neighborhood. John's parents, who are now currently in their mid-80s, have already stopped traveling completely. So usually, the people who likes to travel would be from the bigger cities and also people who have jobs because you need money to travel. Do you know how much a two-week trip to Europe will cost for two people? Well, let me tell you, it ain't cheap. Imagine you're now 35 years old and you've been in a working force for the last 10 years and you're so used to traveling one, two or even three times a year and then suddenly you take early retirement, let's say 58 years old and you're still young, right? You still want to see the world. But guess what? Because you did not plan for an early retirement or your financial planning wasn't solid enough, you actually find out that, oh no, your lump sum of money that you saved up isn't enough to actually fund all your traveling needs. You know, not just can you not travel, you also most likely need to downgrade your entire lifestyle. If you drive a car, you probably need to sell your car. Or if you're in Malaysia, you downgrade to a smaller, cheaper car, probably a Malaysian-made car. If you're in Singapore and you stay in a condo, you may even need to downgrade to a HDB. If you're in Malaysia and you stay in maybe a double-story terrace house, you may need to downgrade to a one single-story terrace house. You know, this is a real-life scenario. Say, for example, you're working in KL, you're from KL, and you've been working for the last 20-30 years, now it's time to retire. You know, cost of living, especially in KL, can be quite high. So what this means is that your take-home salary, you spend all, if not most of it, and you don't save much for your retirement, and you only rely on your EPF for your retirement. You know, in order to make ends meet, maybe you might be thinking, oh, maybe I can move to a smaller town or city to make my ringgit stretch more. Maybe you have this idea, okay, Okay, let me move to a smaller town or a city like Kwantan to retire so that I can lower my cost of living. It may seem like a very good idea on paper, especially the numbers, but the reality might be quite different. When you retire and say in a place like Kwantan, yes, the sea might be just there. It's so beautiful, but however, don't forget it is pretty remote. It is still very far away and it may be the capital city of Pahang, but it's still a little quiet town with nothing much to do. If you're from the big city like Singapore or KL, it's very hard to imagine staying long term in a very quiet life like in Kelantan, Trungano or Kuantan. Gone are the big malls, exciting events like concerts and comedians coming to your city and cafes, bars, restaurants, the nightlife, all that will be gone when you settle into a small town. Well, my fellow Singaporeans, I have something for you too. Now, this is a very hot topic, right? For Singaporeans to relocate to Johor Bahru next door in Malaysia for you to retire. Yes, you can stretch your dollar. You can take advantage of the exchange rate. You can stay in a bigger house, bigger space. You can go for cheaper food and groceries. That's true. My question to you is, do you want to move to Johor Bahru because you love Johor Bahru or is it because you have to? 
assuming you have two to three thousand sing dollars of payout every month for your CPF and you have a downgraded HDB that you fully paid that will barely get you enough with inflation on the horizon a very modest basic lifestyle that you can only afford the most cheapest and basic stuff Gone are the days you can have your Korean barbecue food at Tanjong Paga, have your Atas dinner at Dempsey Hill, or have brunches at PS Cafe. You get my point, right? So Singaporeans, before you even consider retiring in JB, I have another curveball that I want to throw to you. Can you even afford to meet the MM2H requirement for a long-term stay? In every lifestyle choice, there's always prices to pay. If you choose to retire in KL or Singapore, then you better start your financial planning now. If you choose to retire in a smaller town or a smaller place, then please note that you will be leaving your family, your friends behind, your network behind, and you're actually downgrading your life to something that you may not be accustomed to. And cost is not a concern. The whole world is your oyster, right? You can choose to retire in any place, any destination, that you want or you don't even have to pick one you can have numerous destinations every few months we've made friends with numerous digital nomads who are currently all over the world this month here in New Zealand this month here in Taiwan this month here in Japan and guess what they all have in common solid financial planning no matter what age you are at right now, I'd like to ask you a very important question. If you were to stop working right now at this moment and you look at your bank balance, you look at your CPA balance, your EPA balance, where can you retire to comfortably? How long can you retire for? What drastic measures do you need to take to uphold your current standard of living? You know, the numbers can be quite scary. To throw in another scary thing is that as of June 2022, 6.62 million members of EPF that's below the age of 55 have less than RM $10,000 in their EPF accounts. You know what this means? It means that by the time they retire at 55, 65, even 70 years old, they will not have enough money in their EPF to fund them a good retirement life. With the amount of money in their EPF, you can actually say bye-bye to traveling even within Malaysia. For Singaporeans with a two to three thousand monthly payout, you can probably go to JB for a day trip to buy groceries at a cheaper rate, but you cannot dream of traveling anymore. Retirement life in the future doesn't need to be hard and difficult. You don't need to be counting your pennies every day. All you need to do is have solid financial planning and that planning starts now. We hope this video has given you a good wake up call for you to start looking at your finances seriously. Please like this video, share this video with all all your friends, those who like to travel or not, doesn't matter, share it with them so that they too can learn something and we'll see you guys in the next video. Bye! Hey, do join us for our free masterclass webinars where you are up your financial literacy, break out the corporate race and gun for your financial independence. Do register for it now.